morning, family. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And we're live right here at live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. We do these lives uh, on this channel first because we know that it's available for live chat. There's an interactive Bible right there on the website. Also, um, there's a way to connect to my podcast, a way to subscribe to my podcast and to my YouTube channel. And there's other things on there on that website that you could do and it's clean it's distraction free very little um pop-ups or anything like that and it's off the matrix so if you want to be off the matrix and watch and listen um and pay more attention you go to the live that's so winners with a z.org that's why i created that website also so winners with a z.org which is the cell radio network the Lehigh Valley's number one urban gospel music station online since 2008. We're there as well. Amen. Ready um, to get busy with you over there as well. So thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for listening and watching. And thank you for all the one-timers, first-timers, and all those people who have been there since day one. Thank you so much uh, for your support um, since the very beginning. It's an inspiration to me to know that God still has people out there that are hungry for his word. And one are willing to apply his word in real time. And not just think about his word, but apply his word in real time. Today we're talking about confidence in God. Confidence in God. We're going to be in 1 John chapter number 5. Is it 1 John chapter number, let me see. Chapter number 5, verses 14 and 15. Amen. Today in the morning, Devo with your brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And the reason why I do these morning Devos, a lot of people ask and they say, how do you get the, the content to do these morning devos every day? It's simple. I go to the scriptures. I go to my um, my notes here. And then I ask God, what do you want me to talk about? And what? I don't go to the trending topics. You will never see me do that. Amen. That's why maybe I'm talking about a subject that it was hot like two two months ago. And I'm talking about it now because God didn't tell me to talk about it two months ago. Amen. So I go with the, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, God, uh, I rely on his guidance and I know he's speaking to someone every time we read his word. And sometimes that's someone, if it ain't anybody, it's me for sure. Amen. That he speaks to all the time when I read his word. The word of God is alive. The word of God is active. The word of God is living. The word of God breathes life into you. Amen. It's an incredible word um, that God does. And through you and through me, amen, we could get somebody else to get into this word, amen, for themselves. So that way, they, that way they could see the power of the living God through the scriptures. So confidence in God, our motivation must be to advance God's kingdom and his glory. You ever heard a person say, oh, we got to build the kingdom of God or we got to build the church of God? That's not right. Well, no human can build the house of God. No human could build the kingdom of God. We need to expand. Evangelists like me, we expand the kingdom of God, the gospel message. Amen. And whoever listens, whoever chooses to listen, amen, they will be blessed for listening. They will be blessed for applying what they learn. They will be blessed for trusting and putting their hope, faith, and trust in the Lord Jesus. Amen. So we're expanding the kingdom, not building the kingdom. Amen. So I used to say building the kingdom because that's what I heard when I was a young believer. Amen. But I realized in the scripture it says we're supposed to expand the kingdom. The kingdom of God is already built. Amen. God built it. And the church of God is already um, put together. God put it together. Amen. He puts all the pieces, all the parts together. Amen. So we're actually in the finished work of what Christ already has done. But we need to move and be eager for his return and be busy about our father's business. Amen. First John chapter five, verses 14 and 15. Let's have confidence in God. A lot of people have confidence in this world system, confidence in their own things, confidence in this and confidence in that. Well, how about placing your confidence in God? Amen. And that's going to be your goal to have confidence in something. Place your confidence in someone named the Lord Jesus Christ. It's something called the scriptures, the Holy Bible. Amen. 
And that confidence will increase because when you see that the word of God is moving, when you see that the word of God is evidence in your life, when you see that the word of God transforms you and renewed you and restored you, redeemed you and took you out of drug addictions and sex addictions and took you out of the streets and changed your mind and satisfied your soul, you're not going to want to go back to the world. The world's going to be done with because the world is old and decaying. The word of God is new and ever increasing and never expires. Amen. The word of God is new and the newness of life is where it's at. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, when things get too old, I look at it and I said, nah, I don't want to deal with it no more. I have equipment in my garage that's so old that if I try to plug it into my system, it won't read anymore because it's not compatible anymore. I want to be compatible, not only relevant, I want to be compatible to God's economy, to God's system, to God's kingdom. Amen. And I have confidence in God for it as well. Let me just share this real quick to the group so that way they know we're here. Amen. Thank you for your patience with me. So let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. And when we come off those 60 seconds, amen, we'll get right into 1 John chapter number 5, verses 14 and 15. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. Even if I'm not live, by the time you're watching this, amen, if something comes to your heart, something comes to your mind, don't hesitate to reach out. Amen. That's what we're here for. So, Father, I thank you so much that we can have confidence and know that we are born again. Know where we go after this earthly realm. Know that you are our creator, God. Know that you have gone and created a place for us and that you're coming with a new heaven and a new earth. Confidence in your word to be true. Confidence in your church. Confidence in the body of Christ. Confidence in the move of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that we can have confidence in you. Thank you, Father, for doing what you have done through your son. Thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing it all, giving your very best so we could live our very best on this side of eternity. And there's more on the other side. Fill us up, Lord God, with the confidence, Lord God, that you want to fill us up with. Teach us in your word today by way of your Holy Spirit. Respond to the prayer requests um, that you hear daily, Lord God, from your children, from people who are in desperate need of help who are in desperate need of financial breakthrough, who are in desperate need of relational um, situations because they feel all alone. I come against anxiety, depression. I pray that you help us all in those areas as well, Lord God. Suicidal thoughts, we cancel that in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that you will be glorified and your glory will reach out beyond um, this, this realm that we're in and this territory that I'm in. That it will reach out to the outer parts of the world, to remote places um, that people will never imagine that this word will go to because we're expanding the kingdom message. Thank you, Lord God, for using me and using every single person that's available and that's willing um, to do your will on this side of eternity. In Jesus' name, I pray this and I cover everyone by protecting in Jesus' name with health, strength and health to our body, strength to our bones in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord God, for guarding and guiding us through this thing that we call life. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. And all those who agree, we say amen and amen. Help me share this out. We're going to take 60 seconds, share this out to as many people as possible. When we come back, we'll be in 1 John chapter number 5, verses 14 and 15. I'll be right back.
Hey man, we're back. Man, those 60 seconds go by so fast. But listen, if you had 60 seconds left, amen, in your life and you knew that the kingdom of Christ, amen, Christ is coming soon and you knew you had some inside information or whatever, who would you reach out to uh, to make sure that they know to be ready and to repent if they have to repent now, amen? Repentance is um, the way to salvation. We have to turn, stop what we're doing, the wicked stuff, the world, worldly stuff, stop, turn to the Christ the Lord and Savior, amen, and ask him to forgive you right now. You should, we need to do that right now, amen. Some people are in desperate need for that right now. So if that's you, listen, repent, turn from your wickedness, stop what you're doing, turn from your wickedness and turn to the holiness of God. Holiness and righteousness will always be a thing, especially in the kingdom of God. This world doesn't understand it. I was watching earlier today, of all places, of all times, right, uh, uh, and uh, she's an evangelist. She's a worship leader and a preacher, right? And her husband just allows her to do that, amen. And I believe uh, that's why she's so powerful in her ministry. And her husband backs her up one hundred percent. But anyway, she was saying that the church is letting a lot of people, church capital C, is letting a lot of people on the pulpits to sing and worship and play instruments um, because of their talents and gifts. But they are void of anointing righteousness and holiness i was like whoa that's a tough message i gotta hear the rest of it amen and see if um where she's going with that but hey she said it i didn't i'm just repeating i, th- I thought it was interesting um, that she said that she has a lot of confidence in god amen um i don't want to mention the name because i don't have permission and you know i don't want to start nothing because yeah, i haven't saw the whole message so i don't want to vouch for the message yet amen but I, I think she's an interesting person. Her husband and her are a dynamic duo. Amen. I've been following them for uh, for a while on social media. I don't know them personally. I've never been to their church. They just opened up a new church. Um, so but it'll be interesting for an interview. Amen. In the near future with them. So God, God willing, that will happen. Sister Joanne, I see you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo, my sister and my friend. Amen. It's good to see you. And I just realized I didn't share on the live stream on on the website so let me do that asap as i get the get ready to share on the screen amen so confidence in god. who wants confidence i want confidence in god uh, some people say i walk around with a lot of confidence in god amen sometimes i don't see it but um just because i'm in the word all the time might be the reason why people think i have confidence in this understanding and this knowledge amen i truly literally rely on holy spirit god for every situation that life throws my way so it's not, nothing like super dynamic or crazy special about what's going on in me and through me it's all god Everything that i do amen that's the holy spirit holy spirit god i'm trusting you not me i'm not up here trying to gain likes or anything like that i'm just trying to be obedient amen um, to what God had told me years ago what to do um, in this world and just moving forward with, with that. Amen. Moving forward with that. Sometimes all you have to do is show up. Right? And believe God. Trust God's word over your life. Show up. Amen. And be available. Amen. Let me just make sure. Okay. We're here. So let me put this on the screen. For those who are just listening, you already know. I'm not going to leave you out. We're going we're gonna, to you know, show you. I'm going to read word for word everything that you don't see because you're just listening. And I think audio will always be a powerful tool um, for us to get into and to listen to the word of God. It's powerful. First John chapter five, verses 14 and 15. This is the amplified version. This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, very important, people preach, oh, just ask anything in Jesus' name and you'll have it. No, that if we ask anything according to his will, God's will, Jesus, his will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose. Please get that part. He hears us. That's if your prayers are not being hindered, right? This is full confidence in God. Your prayers are not being hindered. You're in right standing with the Lord. You're in good relations with your husband and your, or your wife. You're in good relations with people uh, that did you wrong. You forgave them already, right? All that is into play. 
that if we ask anything according to his will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. Verse 15, we're in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 15. And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the requests which we have asked from him. That's confidence in God. Now, we have to be careful. I know I have to be careful. I can't go around saying, even if I have so much confidence in God, God's going to do this and God's going to do this and do, do this and do that in my life, right? Go around saying that when I'm not sure if that's what he said. In other words, I could be hearing wrong. I was just sharing with a pastor friend of mine yesterday. He called me to see how I was, I was doing. Listen, that's few and far in between calls. And I'm very grateful for all the brothers that call me every now and then just to check up on a brother to see how I'm doing. Amen. You believe it or not, I don't get a lot of those calls, and I'm so grateful when somebody reaches out and asks, how am I doing? Amen. And we have a, a great conversation from there. But I literally told them what God had told me about of this ministry, what was going to happen in our lives before my young daughter turns 13, turns becomes a teenager. And it's a big thing that God, I believe God spoke to me, and I'm confident that he spoke it to me, confident. But I also told him, listen, if it doesn't come to pass, I heard wrong. It's not that God I was lying. It's that I must have heard something wrong. Because we're entitled, according to the scripture, we have confidence as believers. We are entitled to have this confidence because God is real. His word is real. His truth is always relevant. And when he speaks a promise, those promises will come to pass. But we have to make sure that when we ask anything, it has to be according to his will, not our will. If we ask anything, it has to be consistent with the plan of God and the purpose of plan over our lives. He hears us. And if we know for a fact that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have the request which we have asked from him. The key to this is that we have to be in his will. We have to have confidence in what he has telling, what he's telling us to do, what he has told us to do, amen, and be able to really um, work his promises out, work out our faith, amen, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We have to know what we know, what we know, what we know to be true. How do you know something is true? By the evidence. Search out the evidence and see where the evidence leads to. And nine out of ten times, in my life, because it's 10 out of 10, but in my life, 9 out of 10 times that I have this little percentage of doubt sometimes, amen, I move forward quickly. Other times I hesitate and I'm like, I don't know, God, I don't know if this is you or or if this is just me being eager um, to go and do this and that, amen, so I'm careful. Some people just go and walk by faith, they walk on that water, praise the Lord, amen, I love to see it, and one day I hope to get that way when I grow up one day, amen. Good morning, Sister Joyce, good morning, God bless you. In Jesus' name, yes, God bless you as well. Welcome back to the Morning Diva, my sister, my friend, and we miss you. And I'm praying for you and your family. Amen. You've been going through a lot. Amen. I had a tough week last week as well. Um, so, you know, we can share that type of faith with one another when we pray for one another. Amen. Um, thank you so much for coming. But listen, have confidence in God. Don't have confidence in your money, in your talent, <clears throat> in your gift. Because those things, money talent, gift, the gift of God that he gives you will put you in places that you would never think you would be in. That's beautiful, right? But that's temporary. That's on this side of eternity. Also, money, money's fleeing. Money goes, money comes and money goes. That's why I always say, <coughs> especially in ministry, when there's an increase, amen, you know what I'm doing, right? Finding ways to give it away. People think that's nuts. It's not a business model. I'm in a uh, believers in Business Network, amen? Um, and they ask, what is your business model? How do you make money? I said, I don't. I rely on Christ, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, uh, to make the way. I'm not sitting in my studio doing nothing. I have a 247 online radio network, amen, radio ministry. I have to work it or else it won't be updated or else you won't get any updates, no blog posts, um, no new songs, uh, switching rotation 
all that stuff in the background that might sound boring to you, but it's exciting to me. I love what I do in the ministry, but man, I love God even more. Amen. So I'm not going to rely on the ministry, the tool. I'm relying on God who gave me the tool and I gave it back to him a long time ago. I said, I don't want to mess this up, Lord. Here, take this ministry and make sure that I'm doing this right. Then he gives it back and be like, okay, do this, do that, and it'll work. So it's a 24-7 online radio ministry that I'm running. And people say, do you have any listeners? It's amazing. I've been doing this since 2008. When God calls you to do something, don't worry about numbers. Don't worry about status. Don't try to prove over and over again to every single person who asks you, well, do you make money? Oh, yeah, I have listeners. Don't try to prove everything. Just do what God wants you to do. Amen. Have confidence in God and he will guide you. He will guard you, protect you. He will um, financially um, support his mission through us and through what we are called to do. Amen. He'll satisfy all those needs. He's the God who sees our needs and satisfies and provides for every single one of them. Does it get nerve wracking for me? Of course, man. A lot of a lot of um, month and not a lot of money. Amen. So sometimes my money runs out before the month, but it's okay because I'm not the only one. Uh, I, I was somewhere and I realized something um, that I wasn't the only one in the situation. Where was I? It was an eye opening thing. I forgot where I was, and there was other people in the room, the ministers in the room that were like, yeah, man, um, sometimes we're in the red a lot, and we just rely on God, trust God, and the math doesn't line up, and then God, boom, out of nowhere, um, takes care of this and takes care of that. This is a faith fault, amen? But while you're having confidence in God, don't just sit down. Some people just sit down, right, and they pray, and they stay in that seated position and think that God's going to move mountains and all this other stuff, which he can on your behalf without you responding to what he told you to do in the first place. I can guarantee you that if you're in the kingdom of God, God has told you to do something and be a part of something and maybe um, be a part of a movement that he wants you to start or me to start. But then we're just sitting there wondering who's going to do it. Well, God has called you and me to do it. Sometimes we're waiting for others to do something. Meanwhile, God said, "Um, nobody's going to do that. I told you to do that. And when you have confidence in God, you know, whatever he asks of us, just like we have confidence in whatever he, he, we ask of him, uh, listen, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. But we have to be in his will. We have to be consistent in his plan. Amen. And his purpose for our lives. And individually, amen, he has a purpose and plan, purpose and plan. He always has a purpose and plan for everything that he creates, everything that he does, everything that he says, all the promises for your life and for my life. Amen. He doesn't waste our time. And he uses the the things that people don't think are wise or the people who people don't think are wise. He'll use that to confound the wise. Amen. Because he's that good. And all you have to do sometimes is just show up. Brother Daniel, God bless you. I see you. Good morning, my bro. God bless you and your family. Amen. Welcome to the morning, Devo. It's good to see you here. But listen, I'm so confident in God. I know one day I'm not going to be here. Amen. But I'm confident that I will be with him for all eternity. But in the meantime, especially as I'm an evangelist, so you can't stop me talking about the gospel. You can't stop me talking about the Lord Jesus. But in the meantime, let's go and expand the message of the kingdom. We don't build the kingdom. I know I used to say that because that's what I always was used to hearing. And some people still say it. Oh, we have to build the church and build the kingdom. No, we're not building nothing. We're expanding what's already built. We're operating in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus said to Telestai, it is finished. He paid the sin debt. He exchanged himself for what we deserved. And it is a finished work. He's seated at the right hand of the, of the Father on the throne. Amen. But he promised that he's coming back. So we're eager for his, his coming back. But in the meantime, we have work to do. Amen. We're expanding his kingdom, expanding the gospel message throughout this earth. Amen. So when he comes back, um, the right number of people will have heard the gospel message. God bless Brother Mike. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Amen. It's good to see you, my friend and my bro. So listen. That's what I had today. 
And man, I hope I poured out enough. First John chapter 5, read the whole chapter for yourself. We camped out of verses 14 and 15. If you listen to it, if you read it, if you apply it, go to the amplified version of that scripture and you'll get those words in between that emphasize on what the thought is there. And man, you'll be blown away. If you're in the will of God, go for it. If you're not in the will of God, listen, take time to pray, take time to get in the word, take time um, for Holy Spirit to guide you and to teach you, amen, before you run forward without confidence. And once you get this confidence run, man, go forward. Confidence in God is perfectly okay in the kingdom of God for the children of God and for the people of God to move, man. Let's move in confidence. That's not cockiness. That's not arrogance. Amen. It's confidence according to his will and his plan and his purpose for your life and for my life. So I hope this blessed you, man. I'm blessed and I have more confidence now. Now I want to run around the studio, run around the house. But I have a business meeting early on this morning at 7 a.m. So pray for a brother. So and I'll, then I have another meeting after that. But God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.